Hi guys, Andres again here to uh, take you to another of these virtual tours we're doing. This time I'm going to take you to one of the most exciting destinations that we have in South America. Uh, in the bucket list of most of you is the Pantanal uh, and Amazon, that's how we call the tour, even though this tour actually takes place in three main ecosystems that are well marked and very different from each other. This is uh, initially in the Cerrado, a very dry uh, area in the center of Brazil. The Amazon rainforest, of course, very different from that. And the Pantanal, a really um, flat, flat area um, that drains its water very, very slowly from the rainy season to the dry season. And uh, we visit it when it is dry and we can actually um, enter and pass through some of the uh, places there. It's one of the best places to actually see these puppies here, the kitties the jaguar, the mighty jaguar, and we put for those a uh, couple days at the end of the tour to find it. So um, yeah, let me show you while we listen to uh, some of the birds that we see in this region. Let me start with what I'd like is uh, showing on the map where will this tour take place. And in this case, it's right here in the center of Brazil. You see Brazil is so huge. And this is other places that we do tours in uh, Northeast and Southeast Brazil. But the Pantanal is in these flat areas right in here. And we take one flight in the middle of the tour to go here to the south part of the Amazon rainforest. This is the basin, you see. We fly over here that it is um, the south of the Amazon, as I was saying, in the area of Cristalino Jungle Lodge. Okay, so um, let me show you where we'll start. And we'll start with the uh, Cerrado. Yeah, so the Cerrado is these uh, flat elevated areas that uh, occur throughout Brazil, in the center of Brazil. Um, and in this case, we'll visit the Cerrado near the city of Cuiabá. This is the start city and the end city of the tour. We fly into Cuiabá and then we drive for about an hour this road here to this um, area of Chapada dos Guimaraes. And I want to show you something really nice here and why is it so different. Look at these scrapements here. I'm going to try to do one thing here to show you the topography of this area. Notice how the area that we bird here is a little bit uh, higher up in elevation compared to the areas that we initially were in Cuyabá. That's how these areas differentiate in terms of wildlife. So um, notice that we are about 500 meters higher than the city of Cuyabá, just a little bit cooler, but more than anything it holds a variety of, uh, of birds that is quite different from uh, what we could find l later on in, um, in the Pantanal. Okay. So um, some of the birds that we find in these areas of the Cerrado um, are really, really nice. But more than anything, um, well, first off, let's start with some of these um, panoramas. This is my first visit to the Cerrado, it was being very <laughs> uh, touristy, uh, amazed by the uh, ecosystem and the uh, different uh, landscapes that you can see from from these areas. Me there posing as if I didn't know that I was being photographed. <laughs> and uh, as well, some of the um, viewpoints that we get from this area. You see in the bottom here would be the area of Cuyaba. And we are a bit higher than that in these areas. We tend to come to these viewpoints late in the afternoon to look for biscuitate swifts that tend to come into roost and, uh, and other things in there. But um, first we'll start with visiting these um, or checking on some of the special birds that we can find in the Cerrado, like this black-throated saltator here. Um, one of the coolest birds that I find in this particular place that I like the most is this cold crested finch. Not a difficult bird to, not, a di not an easy bird to find, but from time to time uh, it gives you good chances to photograph. 
probably my favorite of the area and one that a lot of people want to see and put special attention to is this guy here the colored crescent chest is a family that is strictly South American and uh, is a very small family so the family chasers they have a particular target in this cerrado with this colored crescent chest that as you can see can eventually cooperate quite well all the things that we look for in there are antrikes like this rufus winged antrike it's a male beautiful bird Another of the specialties, red-shouldered macaw, is one of the smallest, if not the smallest, of the macaws, really. Um, Shrike-like tanagers, white-eared uh, puffbirds are uh, among the cutest birds in the area. Uh, white brom tanagers as well are very, very loud. Um, and as you can see, look at all this sky here. Typically, the Cerrado is very, very, very sunny. Um, <laughs> We take advantage and photograph some of the wildlife that it is also easier to find, like this uh, borrowing owl. But whenever it gets just too sunny, because this area of Cerrado is just flat and the vegetation is really short, so we have almost no shadow, when we are at about 8 or at most 9 a.m., it is really hot, the sun is hitting hard, and the activity just dies out. And when that happens, we need to move towards the gallery forests so so that you can see that in uh, perspective we are birding these areas here there is the cerrado right in there as you can see is quite flat quite quite flat and when we move down to the gallery forests are just around here some of the birds of the gallery forest are more similar to the uh, Amazonian birds than to the cerrado like this Amazonian mud mud or this fiery capped uh, Mannequin, another cool mannequin, band tail mannequin is one of the targets that we want to find there. Um, brown jacamar, flavis and warbler is another of the specialties of this uh, forest. And this one here is a tough one, but from time to time we do see this pheasant cuckoo. It's a big prize if we find it. Um, Saffron billy sparrow is, um, is a cool bird. For some reason, not for me, but for a lot of people, this is a very, very cool sparrow. I find it okay. Once we have um, reached the afternoon, late in the afternoon, we move towards these areas here, these scrapings in this area, that are a really nice viewpoint that is called the Mirante Geodesico, because apparently this location here is the very, very, very center of South America, right? Right in there. In those areas, we always find things like a cliff flycatcher. This subspecies used to be called the swallow flycatcher. Crested black tyrants are there as well. And one of the big, big targets, rare but possible, orange breasted falcon. And uh, some of the most uh, um, some of the smaller ones, like this wedge-tail grass finch. Once we are done with the Cerrado, um, we go back to the city of Cuyaba and fly about an hour and a half to two hours to these areas here in Cristalino Jungle Lodge. Notice that it is the south, southern most part of the uh, Amazon in there and we visit these areas. Notice how most of these areas have been already deforested for uh, soy and other things. Um, that's why we visit this particular place. They, they also protect a lot of land. And um, this is the Teles Peters River here, and this is the small Cristalino River. And this foundation, this foundation called the Cristalino Foundation, they protect a vast amount of land, which looks small in this big in the big uh, um, picture but it is quite important because the things that they manage to protect here are very very nice and this lodge particularly is really really nice so we start now with the amazon and we visit cristalino jungle lodge i took this picture from their website i don't think that they mind when i promote them a little bit uh, and this is a very nice photo from the canopy that you can see um, 
and that's one of the things that we need to do when we are in the Amazon is visit the canopy and for that Cristalino has two different um, canopy towers that allows you to um, explore the canopy and when we are there even though we are in this super remote area we are in very very comfortable rooms these are the superior rooms the others are the standard ones are not as nice but still super comfortable um, the social areas of Cristalino Django Lodge are super cool we tend to do some uh, fires here um, during the night sometimes we have blackish niger sitting in these rocks here and from these trees here sometimes we have uh, a crested owl calling so no the area is uh, is very nice as you can see this is the Cristalino river and this is the sun deck a lot of people like uh, taking a bath there swimming in the river is a nice thing but what we normally do is we move in these canoes up and down the river quite a bit birding and going to different trails in the um, in the place and yeah no the um, the things that we can find in the Amazon are incredible and um, we spend five days here five full days here and um, that's why we well and there's plenty plenty to see here and that's why I was telling you that it is important about these um, these uh, well this bird <laughs> the uh, this is so important that the, the, they protect these areas because things like this can occur in the canopy there is an array of uh, tanagers that is very nice um, a lot of them and uh, abundant like a black-faced darkness masked tanagers one of the coolest ones a paradise tanager or um, this one here is in its own family of uh, tanagers a small family now like four members this is a red-billed pie tanager turquoise tanagers as well um, this white wing shrike tanager is one of the coolest things as well and yellowback tanager all the things that we can find here that are big targets include this Pompadour Cotinga that it is quite localized but this is one of the best places to find this this, um, this another Cotinga that occurs here is this cool um, spangled Cotinga and there are some specialties in this particular area that are really good like Amazonian pygmy owl black girdle barbet is one of the big targets of the area because it's quite localized to this portion of the Amazon and uh, this is another of the really cool things that the uh, Cristalino area is famous for the uh, very rare and local Olbill, fiery tail Olbill, a uh, very rare hummingbird plus we have a chance to see this guy the mighty harpy eagle um, every time I've gone there either we have seen it or a group of other tourists that are staying at the same time at the lodge have seen it so it's a good deal is a good chance to see this bird mm. we have a ton of different species of parrots and macaws that show up and we can see them from the tower like this green wing or um, the um, yellow blue and yellow macaws that I just uh, had uh, before toucans are super cool uh, <laughs> like these toucanets and uh, arasaris are so picturesque this coral crested arasari and uh, some other specialties that show up there is a uh, shrike virios like this gray cap shri shri shrike virio and uh, purple tufts um, white broad purple tufts mm. paradise jacamar such a cool bird pipe puffbird is quite widespread but it's a cool bird and uh, another ecosystem that we visit here as the river islands so um, we bird the river up and down and we also visit the river islands that are there and uh, we tend to look for these guys here in the afternoons typically this razor built curacaos are among the biggest targets that, and the biggest prices that we can find when we bird the, uh, the rivers here we um, especially go for this bird here that is the Amazonian umbrella bird and there's a really good place a lek that we can find these guys as a one of the best places to find it some of the most widespread birds in the Amazon this is a swallow wing puff bird very easy just from the um, 
uh, lodge area, quite easily photographable. Some specialties that are not the gaudiest of the birds, but uh, still Amazon and Tyrannulid, for instance, and uh, glossy anthrakes are things that we look for when we do these uh, river uh, boat rides. This is an interesting uh, swallow because it only lives in very small river rapids. It's a river rapid specialist, something that it is quite unusual. It's called the black colored swallow. Uh, on the sides of the river, we tend to have a few species of parrots and parakeets or parrotlets that uh, eat the clay, getting the salts out of, this, out of the uh, soil. So we have dusky billed parrotlets and, um, them, and also the um, parakeets, the buff, Santarem parakeets. Sorry. Uh, there are a couple of species of nighthawks and nightjars that we can find when we visit the river islands. This is a blackish uh, nightjar we tend to find there, and this is the leather tailed nightjar. We can have also lesser nighthawk in the same areas. Uh, for a lot of people, this is a good target as well to find the green ibis, not easy in other parts of the Amazon. And this is one of the most beautiful birds, especially when it, it spreads its wings, the uh, sun bittern. This is the first place that we have a chance to see it, but later on in the Pantanal, it is also quite possible. In terms of herons, we can have this cool capped heron, um, but the one that it is a big, big target is this guy here. This is a zigzag heron. It is a heron that it is a smaller than a typical green or a striated heron, and it tends to be active, or at least vocally active, only at dusk, when it starts to get really, really dark, and therefore it is quite difficult to find. So this is a tough bird to see, and we can, we can easily see there. And apart from birds, there is also a nice amount of wildlife that we can find around, like the Amazonian tapir. We had uh, one tour in which we had seven different sightings of tapir. Wow, that was incredible. And the uh, very last tour that I had, we were really, really lucky because we were just going down slowly on the boat and I spot this <laughs> ocelot that came down to the river for some water. That was an incredible thing. Another ecosystem. Another ecosystem is the, the forest interior. And there is a bunch of things that we can find in the forest interior that are tough. It's tough because inside the forest it is quite dark and very, very dense. But the rewards are very interesting. For a lot of uh, people, their main targets are ant birds. And we have a chance to see a few of those, like these uh, black spotted bear eye. Um, Cristalino has an interesting thing. It has a couple of places inside the forest that they put some blinds and they put some water so during the very very dry dry season in Cristalino um, there's only a little bit of water inside the forest and birds congregate to these water holes that they feed these uh, the guides in Cristalino they feed and so many species they come to drink this plain-throated anren or shingus lady-backed uh, scale-backed anbird uh, spot winged antrike and uh, up to three species of mannequins like this is no cap mannequin is a very cool bird and even for narids like the chestnut winged hookbill or a, a striped wood creeper this one is actually one that I I'm pissed about because I've been there several several times and I haven't seen it but for a while they they were having this uh, bird in these uh, blinds uh, is a scaled ground cuckoo a picture of a friend colleague of mine uh, George Lin who rubs this picture in my face all the time when he can uh, I wish at some point I could see this bird I have not been lucky enough in any case, other things that you can find inside the forest include these um, scarlet uh, bellied uh, parakeets or um, cryptic forest falcon that is difficult to find, long tailed patoos, a rose breasted chat, and uh, royal flycatchers. 
some monkeys as well, white cheeked spider monkeys, and uh, we can even find ourselves surrounded by white lipped peccaries. Well, after five awesome days in the Amazon, uh, we start with the Pantanal. And for that, we have to take uh, the last of the boat rides here in the Amazon, go back here, take the car to the city of uh, Alta Floresta here, and afterwards just take again another flight for about two hours down south to the um, Pantanal. Again, we arrive in the city of Cuyabá, right in here, and from there we will start doing in six days this track here. All right, the Pantanal more or less starts around here. You can see a difference uh, in the ecosystem here, much wetter. And what we do in the Pantanal is we do two nights in the northern part of the Pantanal, two nights in the center part of the Pantanal, and two nights in the southern part of the Pantanal. And also we bird the Transpantanera, that is this road here. And so we will be starting with the northern part of the Pantanal that starts just south of this small town of Pocone. And the place that we stay at is called the Posada Puval. It's just around here. Um, but I warn you, if you had a idea in your mind, a picture of your mind of what the Pantanal looks like, it may be about to change. For me, it did. Um, I always assumed before going to the Pantanal that it is this super incredible, awesome, beautiful place that has a lot of wildlife. And I was, mis you know, I was right only and I was right, but only not right in one thing that it is that it is beautiful. To me, it's not really beautiful. Um, particularly in terms of the scenery, it's not. You visit there in the driest time of the year, which means that uh, you can actually access the roads into the Pantanal, but also means that it is many times dusty and really, really dry. And the um, scenery is not particularly nice. Uh, you see you bird a lot in these ranches, especially in the north part of the Pantanal. And um, you see that the scenery is like really, really flat, not a single mountain in the distance. And uh, even though some water can still be around, enough to get your car stuck if you are not <laughs> wise enough, like our driver here. Um, that got us stuck <laughs> there. Um, you can also get in some more drier areas and like we have here a group, uh, great friends here, um, and, and bird around these ranches. But also it can be like this dry, 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 dry. So um, yeah, the picture that you have in your mind may have changed. But remember that I was telling you that it is absolutely awesome and full of wildlife well yes it is the things that you see there just blow your mind and this is what you are about to see here probably the main target when people go to the Pantanal is this guy here Hayatsi Makos and they are not hard to find they are in fact super confiding these ones um, were in an afternoon when there was a little bit of water here and they were drinking in one of the driest times I've ever been to the Pantanal. Um, I was there with a group of people from Alaska and it was record high temperatures. <laughs> yeah, poor guys, they were melting. Uh, but birds struggled to find some water and, and they uh, went down to the ground a lot, even these parrots. Um, but yeah, as you can see, you can see them really close and they give you all types of different poses and uh, views. So Hayatsin Makos, check. Then another family that it is quite, uh, quite a great one is this one, Seriemas. There's only two, black-legged and red-legged. And here in the Pantanal, we go for the red-legged Seriema. Beautiful bird. Um, 
I don't know if elegant is um, the correct description, but in any case, it's an impressive one. Everybody wants to see that. Uh, it tends to sit on top of um, these termite mounts, and it is not a small bird. So you can see how big these um, termite mounts are. Well, we saw this one already, but I just wanted to show you this picture because I just like it. Sun bittern, again, is quite common in the Pantanal, and the north part especially. And we start seeing these guys, <laughs> the uh, curassows, bare-faced curassows. Um, this is the male, the previous was the female. You see, the Pantanal, that's the thing, it has a lot of big, big birds. And so ibises, like this buff-necked ibis, is um, common there. Uh, several, several hawks, like a great black hawk, or this one is a crane hawk, or savannah hawks, are uh, all the time present. Um, as well as some of the iconic birds of South America, like greater rias. This is a nice female just running away from me, and this is a male being really territorial to us and protecting his uh, female right there. Um, another one that people really, really want to see when they go to the Pantanal is these alien-looking ones, the uh, Jabiru storks. They are huge, really. Um, so this uh, nest is also quite quite a big one. In terms of other smaller birds, there are not many hummingbirds, but the few that you manage to see is uh, like hermits, for instance, um, and other things. Uh, Rufus-tailed um, jacamars are common there. And these guys here, kind of evil looking to me, they are Gira cuckoos. Bad hair day on those Gira cuckoos. There's a couple of night birds that we go for as well, uh, like uh, Great Potu or um, Nakunda nighthawks. There's also spot tailed nighthawks and night jars and uh, a couple other things, but sometimes we get lucky and we get these Nakunda nighthawks fairly closing not that late in the day. Um, in terms of passerines that you can see in uh, these drier areas of the Pantanal include like these dull-capped Attilas. This is called the Soldadinho or um, helmeted mannequin. Some uh, wood creepers that are cool like this one is a big target. I really wanted to see these guys, a great Rufus wood creeper and a red bill scythe bill. So, yeah, other things like Rufus Cassiornis representing the passerines and uh, a very common but picturesque saffron finch. Um, even some of the most uh, subdued birds like uh, pipits, this is a yellowish pipit. In terms of toucans, we have a couple of species. Uh, chestnut ear Arasari that is also in the Amazon, but this guy here is one of the most iconic birds in South America, present in uh, many different promotional things all over the continent, really. The Toko toucan, the biggest of the toucans. And in terms of woodpeckers, we have a bunch, white wedge piculate being the smallest, um, crimson crested woodpecker being the most widely distributed, probably. Uh, we also have uh, a golden green. Oh, this one is a cool one, white woodpecker. Oof, that's a really cool bird to see. Actually, flocks several several woodpeckers of this species are together many times, and the flickers here are quite impressive, eh? Campo flicker. Now, the Pantanal is famous not only for the birds, but also for big mammals. They actually there are some tours that people do after the Big Five of South America in terms of mammals, and this is my particular favorite one. This is the beast that I wanted to see the most when I first went to the Pantanal, the giant anteater. Yeah, you see, we were trying to focus on a seriema and the giant anteater just decided to photobomb the seriema. You have to go for the anteater. After all, you can only see so many seriemas, yeah? Yeah, I like this, this animal, as you can see. Um, some other mammals, um, crab eating fox. We do typically also some night drives, just like in the uh, in Africa, you do some night drives. We do the same after some of these uh, animals. We get um, tapirs, we sometimes get these foxes, we crab eating raccoons, rabbits, a bunch of different things. 
Um, but then we move down south. We take our path, and after spending some time in the north of the Pantanal, we start moving down these very long straight stretches. And we cross through a, a bunch of dry areas in uh, this path here. You can see that uh, this picture in Google Earth was taken during the dry time, so you cannot see a lot of water because everything that you see around here uh, right now is shrinking uh, water holes. And that's why you could see in the picture before this accumulation of um, caimans that happens here is because everything here used to be underwater, but now because it's in the dry season, it is shrinking the water holes and there is a bunch of caiman just being there and together with that a lot of different wildlife as well. Um, and we arrive into the Pishaim area here where we'll spend the next two nights and where we'll spend the next two afternoons in this river doing a couple of very cool boat rides um, along here along this Pishaim river is one of the coolest things to do really in, uh, in uh, the Pantanal um, because it's quite relaxed it's quite nice we do a little bit of birding also in the gallery forest but uh, uh, the birding along the forest, the, the river, is uh, what is uh, the nicest in this particular portion. Um, we look for things like this agami heron, one of the uh, nicest herons in the world, if not the nicest. Um, we have, when it is dry, uh, you see, in June it is not as dry, there is still some water, but by September or so it is even drier, so it's sometimes easier to find these things. So when it is dry, uh, what I mean is that we have more chances of seeing a gummy heron. Um, other things that we have, like boatbill herons in the same family, cocoi herons all over the place, and uh, reflescent tiger herons, associated with water, of course, sun grieve, one of the best places to see that. Um, a few rails are, um, are available, like this uh, great cowled wood rail. And in one only afternoon that we do a two-hour boat ride, we can eventually get to see, most times we do see um, the five species of South American kingfishers, starting with Amazon, uh, green kingfisher. This is the toughest, really. Um, green and rufous, but with some uh, effort we tend to get it. Green and Rufus. Ringed is all over the place. This is a big bird. And uh, American Pygmy. So the five we can see in, a, in a one boat ride in that particular river is very nice. Other birds related to water is Blackback Water Tyrant, um, Black Capped Donacobius, having an argument there. Um, yeah, another one. And uh, also there's a couple of hawks that are related to water, like this black colored hawk that people from the lodge have managed to do an interesting thing. They, the staff goes fishing in the afternoons for piranhas and then they get this fish and they throw it to the hawks that follow the, the boats and we get a chance to do some nice shooting after flying birds and try to get these um, hawks in flight. And not only those, but sometimes like roadside hawks and even the ring kingfisher responds and we try to take uh, flight shots of those. Um, other things that we can find around here include um, the cool giant otters, the giant river otters. And then we continue south. Yes, we continue south through this Transpantanera. This is the Transpantanera. <laughs> and this is one of the most iconic things that you see in the Transpantanera, the bridges, these wooden bridges most of them are fine, but there are some that look pretty uh, scary. Um, and you have to cross them. There is like 150 bridges, I think, in 150 kilometers of the Transpantanera. It's an interesting thing. It's a very, very cool um, experience. Um, so what we're doing is we're taking the road down south and um, in a couple hours drive, Burning our way down, really, we make this track and go all the way down to the southmost part of the province or the um, state of uh, Mato Grosso until here, 
where we stop at the border of the Cuyaba River and this is our hotel for the next two nights. Um, on that ride we tend to find uh, very nice things like these um, white-headed marsh tyrant is one of my favorite birds of the Pantanal. Um, Rusty-backed anrens are really cool. Uh, Rusty-colored seed eaters as well. Uh, this is a nice male. And some icterids like these uh, white-browed meadowlark. Uh, these are scarlet-hooded blackbirds. And some other bigger things. This uh, starts getting wetter every time, and so we have these screamers, uh, southern screamers, and we start seeing from the bridges sometimes these sandbanks and we can get uh, pied lapwings and you can get also a few turns there's three species in here yellow bill large bill and a skimmer also we can get in this boat right or, or in this um, right down south um, again some tapirs eventually and uh, we start seeing a ton of capybaras, a ton of capybaras. Um, we get also things like um, uh, deers, there is like three species of, species of deer in this area and um, a ton of caimans, they reproduce quite well, <laughs> the caimans, which is very good for this, the kitties. Yeah, so at this point we arrive here and from here on we don't see the car in a couple days but we do boat rides and we take these boats from here up and down these rivers and these are speed boats they are fast boats they are not canoes and we go up and down this river these small tributaries um, and what we do is from the boat we go scanning the banks of the river after jaguars from here on, the main focus is not birding. Even though we get a couple of uh, new birds on the way, on the process, the main, the main target switches to this, the jaguar. This is the very first jaguar that I ever saw in my life. This is a youngster, as you can see, pretty <laughs> funky looking. Um, and this is one of the ones that I enjoyed the most because it gave us so many different poses to photograph a few years back. The same guy here and the same guy here it just stayed in this log forever and gave us all um, angles. Um, another one, a different year we got is this uh, jaguar that crossed in front of us and swam across the river several times. Um, so basically what we do in this particular, in this couple of days is we um, just look for jaguars and in the process if we see something new we do, but getting sights of these things is the main target. Uh, we were really lucky one tour when we found a mom with a couple of cubs going across. This one that was really small was actually attached to the back of the mom as it swam across the river in front of our boat. This one was a little bit uh, older so he could do it on his own. Um, we move up and down and scan and try to find these uh, jowers. The most I've seen, the most sightings I've seen is like three or four in one morning. So the chances of seeing the jower, even though you can say that it's never guaranteed, lately it's been quite, quite reliable. Um, this was last year as a female. This is one of my favorite pictures I've ever taken. Look at that, those eyes of the jaguar, just beautiful. Um, and yeah, all kinds of poses. Uh, sometimes you see them hunting or, or going for a kill. Sometimes um, you see some uh, uh, doing some uh, kill attempts. And last year I was so lucky finding this family. It's not me that actually find it, the, the, the boat ride, the, the, the captains of the boats have amazing eyes and they managed to find these guys uh, quite well so we found initially these two and we were just looking at them they were just sitting there in the bank of the river and then suddenly a third one shows up and we say oh man there's going to be a confrontation here is going to be a fight cut fight <laughs> and uh, as this one here in the center approaches i thought it was going to be a big fight 
and it turned out to be the mum of these two old cubs that uh, were still together with the mum. And then all of a sudden a fourth jaguar appears, and then it was a little bit of a confrontation. The mum went out and slapped away the other jaguar and it just went away. So this is one of the best things you can ever do in the in South America. Or time after seeing a few jowers and a few different things has come to an end. In one go, the last day of the tour, we basically ride all these 150 kilometers of dirt road back to the city of Cuyaba. Typically I arrive late, uh, fairly late in the afternoon and um, come here there is our hotel just next to the airport and finish the tour with a nice meal typically I take my tour to this uh, Rodicio is one of the most famous things in uh, Brazilian gastronomy when uh, at about um, seven to eight waiters they all come with different types of meat that they come fresh from the grill and uh, you serve yourself just uh, it's just tasty it's very 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 nice it's also really good for vegetarians because you can see that in my plate there um, there's plenty of options for vegetarians, um, a ton of salads and, and different things. But for the ones that enjoy meat, I um, tell you, you have to try the picanha in Brazil. And um, that's it. It has come to an end. Or, if you're already here, you can put together a visit to probably Rio de Janeiro uh, and enjoy that or the beaches. Here we are with my wife in my first try, my first uh, visit to Brazil. So I hope you have enjoyed it, guys. Um, I hope uh, you can join me in a real Pantanal tour at some point. Hey, don't forget to watch the other videos by your other guides and the previous one that I did, Argentina as well. So um, have a nice time.